Hey everyone, I'm so excited to see you guys here for episode four of Danger Zone. What I want you guys to do is go ahead, open up your Bibles, and let's turn to Acts chapter 16. But while you guys are turning to Acts chapter 16, I want to share a story with you guys. I will never forget this day. You see, my mom and my family and I, we had just got evicted from our house. We had been in this house for a very long time. I even remember the exact address. That's how long we had been there. We had grown from elementary school there. And this house, uh, my parents had just got a divorce, so money was super tight. My mom became a single mom overnight, and she had these three kids, me, my brother, and my sister. And the day came where basically she had to put all of us and all the few things that she could pack into a suitcase, put us into a little red car, and because there's a big eviction notice that was on the door. And so we got into the car, she begins to drive. And at this point, I don't really think my mom knew where she was gonna drive to or where she was going. All she knew was that she had to leave that house. And so exactly that's what happened. We got in the car, we began to just keep driving and keep driving. And if you live in the state of Mississippi, um, where Hartfield is right now, my mom's car just stopped. Like it just like stops. So she like, um, well, it was like making smoke and then she had to pull over and then it just like stops. And in that moment, I just remember my mom, she just starts just to like cry out to God. And she just begins to say, God, I just thank you. God, you are amazing. God, there is no one like you. And, but I'm in the back seat and I am afraid. I'm about maybe 11 or 12 years old at this age. And my brother and sister, they're asleep. But I just see my mom in this moment, what made me feel afraid, made me feel like I couldn't help my mom in that moment. She, in this moment, she's praising God. She just thank you God for keeping us safe. She's thanking God for our protection. And I want us to go to Acts chapter 16, verse 22. And I want to read the scripture. It says this, The crowd rose up against them, and the chief magistrates tore their robes off them and proceeded to order them to be beaten with rods. And when they had struck them with many blows, they drew them into the prison, commanding the jailers to guard them securely. And at he had received such a command, threw them into the inner prison, and fastened their feet into the stocks. Verse 25, But about midnight, come on, I like this. But about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Verse 26. And suddenly there came a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison house were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were unfastened. And when the jailer awoke and saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But verse 28. But Paul cried out with a loud voice saying, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And he called for lights and rushed in. And trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. And after he brought them out, he he said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? But verse 25 is what I want to highlight. About midnight, about midnight, Paul and Silas, they were praying and singing hymns to God. And other prisoners were listening to them. Acts 16, 25. How are we supposed to face the future that we have no control over? How are we supposed to face the future that we have no control over? When I read that, that's the first thing that I, I kind of just felt like, even in that moment when I was in that car in the backseat, like how are we supposed to face the future that we feel like we have no control over? So I want to kind of back things up a little bit before the scripture happens. See, we see in this moment that Paul and Silas, here they are, they are sharing God's word. They're sharing God's gospel. And as they're doing this, there's this girl, her name is Lydia. And so Here's the series. She's, she's like possessed with this different spirits and, and different things that are happening. And the Bible says that she was possessed by an evil spirit that gave her the ability to predict, predict the future. And so the, the apostle Paul, he, he has compassion on her and he begins to pray in Jesus' name that she would be set free from the evil spirits. The men who owned her, however, were celebrating like she was. And they were, they were so mad. So here it is. I want to break it down for you guys. So here's this lady. She's possessed by evil spirits. Paul and Silas, here they are. They're praying in the name of Jesus that she'd be set free. And the people that owned her, they were, they were upset about it. They were so mad that they wanted to make sure that Paul and Silas got thrown into jail. And so that's exactly what happened. See, these guys, they begin to get thrown into to jail, but here they are. They're in jail. Now, I got to be honest with you guys. Well, if I was thrown into jail, the first, my, my first response isn't to sing. My first response isn't to pray. My first response is to, is to be, feel sad. It's to feel lonely. It's to feel doubt. It's to feel like so much shame and so much guilt is being thrown into prison. But Paul and Silas, their response was different. They responded differently. I like the way that they respond because we see here, it says about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns unto God. Wow. That's something that we can learn right here in our very first point is that in the midst of trials, in the midst of things that you're facing, that you can worship God in that moment, that you can sing out to God. Because here they are in a prison. They've done nothing wrong. All they've done is literally pray for someone and that she got set free. But here they are in jail. And at about midnight, they just begin to sing praises unto God. They begin to spend that time with God. I want to encourage you in this very first part, when things come up, 
when things let's begin to creep in, whether that's doubt, whether that's fear. Maybe you failed at something recently. Maybe you failed a test that you needed to get into PT school. Maybe things have like maybe you've been trying to build a house and so far the foundation has been kind of cracked. Can I encourage you in something that you can sing out hymns to God? That you can just say, you know what, God, I just thank you. That God, that you are my healer. That God, that you can fix this foundation. That God, even though I may have failed PT school, but it's okay, God, that I know that you can turn it around for my good. That God, I do see a victory. That I would encourage you this week. I challenge you that when those moments come, that you would just take a moment just to worship God. That you begin to worship away those fears. That you begin to worship over your, your worries. That you begin to worship over for your healing. That you begin to worship over that sickness. That you begin to just, because when you worship, that's when the joy comes. That's when you begin to see the situation, like how God sees it. I encourage you this week to fix your focus. Oh, come on, somebody. Put it in the chat. Send it to a friend. Fix your focus. See, a lot of times we look at the situation. Like Paul and Silas, they could have been looking at the situation. that they Here they are. They're in jail. They're in jail, y'all. They could have been like, man, I, we're in jail. Like, we're stuck. It's never going to get better than this. But they didn't do that. That's not what they did. It says it right here. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. You know what they did? They took their focus off of those things. They put their focus on God. They began to fix their focus. They took their focus off of their situation. They took their focus off the doubt. They took their focus off the fear. They took their focus off the bills that were piling up. They fixed their focus. Fix your focus. Focus on God. Put your focus on Him. And so that's what I encourage you doing. Point number one, worship your way through. Worship. Take that moment. And you don't have to be a good singer. You don't have to have all these albums and all these Grammy Awards. No, God just wants to hear from you. Begin to just sing. Ask the Holy Spirit just to download some sing songs into your heart and to sing your way through. Even if it's something, maybe it's like frustration at your job right now. Maybe a coworker has been getting on your nerves. Maybe a boss has been very tough on you. But I would encourage you in that moment, if you can, right there, in that cubicle, play you some, play you some music. Play you some worship songs. Just play some. Just play it and, and just begin to say, you know what, this, Lord, this is how I fight my battles. It may look like I'm surrounded, but you know what, God, I am surrounded by you. Just begin to sing out to God. Sing out those hymns and those praises in those moments. Why? Why should you do that? What's the point? How is that going to change anything? I'm going to tell you why. Because it fixes your focus on God. And you're able to see that situation. You may say, you know what, yes. Yes, this coworker has been very frustrating to me. Yes, this boss has been very hard on me. But you know what? I'm going to make them some cookies, and I'm going to share the love of God with them. You're able to see the situation different. Be like, you know what? They might be going through a tough time. Because a lot of times we look on me, 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 and me that we never really see the other people and what they're facing as well. Like when you fix your focus, you're able to see that person and be like, you know what? They're going through a tough time, and that's why they're, being, that's why they're causing all this frustration. Or maybe for you, it's like it's a lot of debt that's been piling up, and you're able to look at that debt and say, you know what? If I would just save my money and, and instead of buying all these shoes and put that money towards that, that can start to see this credit card debt go down. But you're, it's hard to see those things if you're always focused on that and not focusing on God because God's able to show you the way of how to go through that situation. Because we're going to go through trials and tribulation. That's going to happen. But that's okay, though, because Jesus is overcoming, that we can have our faith in that. Because those moments, it's like danger, danger. I mean, this is the moment, right? Here they are, Paul and Silas in prison. Danger, danger, danger. And what's super cool is, I want us to keep going into the scripture, because we see here that as, they, as they're praising God, that suddenly there was an earthquake that shook the entire jail, knocking the doors to everyone's cells open, breaking loose their chains. Like, literally, in the scripture, we see that. We see them as soon as that happens. Like, it says right here, but about midnight, verse 25, Paul and Silas were praying, singing hymns of praise to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there came a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison house were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's chains were unfastened. All right, can I be honest? If I was in prison, I've been praising God, and the doors are open, you know what I'm doing? I'm out of there. I'm gone. I'm not looking back. I'm out. I'm done. But let's keep reading, though, because in verse 27, Paul and Silas has a different response. You see, when the jailer awoke and saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself so that the prisoners had escaped. Verse 28. But Paul cried out with a loud voice saying, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And he called for lights and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. And after he brought them out, he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Oh, how cool is that? See, their praise is not just for you. Oh, come on. Your praise is not just for you. See, when they were praising, it didn't just impact them, but it also impacted the jailer. See, the jailer at that moment, he got saved. And... For me, honestly, in that moment, if I'm praising and then the earthquake happens and it shakes the jail and the doors open, I'm gone. I'm not looking back. But Paul and Silas shows us something. It shows a very important moment. It shows that our praise impacts others. That is not about us. 
that God wants to use us as well to impact others, to make a difference in others' lives. See, in that story that I told you guys earlier, it's you know, my mom, she's praising God. I'm, I'm in the back, and, and I see this moment happen. And as she's fixing her focus, she gets a phone call from a friend that she hadn't heard from in a long time. And her friend goes, hey, I, I don't really know why I'm calling, but I just know that your, your name came up into my heart. Is there anything that you need? Oh, come on, come on, church, come on. Like, here it is, my mom is praising, right? And then she gets a phone call from a friend she hadn't heard in a long time, but my mom's name came up into her heart. And in that moment, she goes, do you need anything? My mom's like, actually, yes. I'm on the side of the road with three kids. I just need some shelter for the night. Can you help us out? And we would be able to go stay with them, and they fed us, and they, they were there for us, and they were super kind. But that moment has always marked me. Because in that moment, it was a great reminder that when stuff arises in my life, when situations come, when moments where I feel defeated, when moments where I failed, when moments where I didn't know what to do, that in that moment that I knew to fix my focus, focus off that situation and put my focus on God, that that praise didn't just unlock for my mom, but it also unlocked something in me. It reminded me that God is with me, that God is on my side that he is for me, that he is not against me, that he's never lost a battle, that there's nothing that our God cannot do, that when danger, 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 when it arise, when those doubts come in, when those fears come in, that I can fix my focus, not on those things, but put it on God, that I can fix my focus on that moment, that I can do what Paul and Silas does. In the midst of that situation, in the midst of that chaos, in the midst of that storm, they sung hymns and praises to the Lord, that they took the time to say, you know what, God, you're for me. You know what, God, I know I'm in a prison, but God, you'll never leave me nor forsake me. You know what, God, I am more than a conqueror. You know what, God, by his stripes, I am healed. You know what, God, you sent your son on the cross to die for me, that you love me so much. You know what, God, this isn't the end, this is the beginning, that my best days are right in front of me. You know what, God, I can trust in you, trust in the Lord with all my heart and lean not on my own understanding, Proverbs 3, 5. Like, I, I can trust you, God. I know you, God. I put my focus on him. So I encourage you this week, number one, worship your way through. Worship your way through. Set up, like I'm telling you, just give God just one minute. Just give God just a, a phone and some worship music and just begin to worship. But number two, I encourage you, fix your focus on him. Fix your focus on God. Choose joy this week. Just choose joy. In those moments when it happens, you choose joy. So church, let's pray together. God, I just thank you right now in the name of Jesus that we would choose joy whenever situations arise that we would do like Paul and Silas in that moment, in that prison, God, that we would choose joy in the midst of our situation, God. When everything around us is looking that way, God, that we won't let what we see change how we see you. That, God, you are for us. That, God, you are with us. That, God, you will never leave us nor forsake us. That, God, you are on our side. God, I just thank you for your, your mighty hand on our lives. God, I thank you, God, that you have ordered our steps, God, like it says in your word, God, that you, you love us and that, God, that you know us. God, I just thank you, God for your mighty hand. I thank you, God, for what you're going to do, God, that you are my helper. It says that I look up to the hills, that's where my help comes from. So God, I thank you for that, God. I thank you that as people begin to just, like, just face these situations, God, they will worship their way through, that they would remember whose they belong to, because they belong to you, that their faith and their trust can be put into you, God, that you care about them, that you love them, that you know them. Holy Spirit, do what you want to do in our lives. God, you belong to us. So God, I just thank you. There is nothing impossible for our God. Thank you, Father. Thank you for all that you're going to do. It's in your mind that we pray. Amen. All right, church, I hope to see you guys soon. See you back for episode five.